Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the introduction, Christine. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's one and a half, so I think that most of you probably are having lunch while listening to me. So it's it's good appetit, buon appetit, uh, buen appetito. Uh, I hope that I'm I don't I don't list I don't hear like uh, too boring for you right now, and I hope really um, you are doing well right now. Difficult times, uh, everything is quite difficult for all of us, the startups, the students, the teachers, organizations, business. I think it's it's difficult for 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 everyone, so I just hope that you're doing you're doing well. Okay, we're facing uh, we're facing a very difficult time, and none of us can whether uh, know if the changes that we are experiencing is, um, experiencing uh, will will be will stay with us, or will just change again, and if they're going to be here tomorrow, or we don't know actually. So everything that I will be talking today will be based on my experience. It's only my opinion. It's really open. I just hope that you 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 see it like that. And if you have any other opinion, you can always share with me. You can ask any question. Uh, I really want you to ask questions during the session and everything. So just take it as my opinion because that's, that's what it is. Okay, today um, we will be talking about uh, problems, opportunities, examples uh, of pivoting of the startups that we know. Uh, some methodology as design thinking, some tools that I think are very interesting right now for the for the moment that we're living, and some trends and recommendations that I think that we are all like witnessing. Um, as I say, everything is based on my experience. We are currently based in Madrid, in Spain. That is one of the countries that is most affected by the uh, by the pandemic. So maybe the situation in your country is different. And I hope it, it is. <laughs> so, okay, let's start. Um, let's see, uh, yes. Okay, two months ago, I was just in Madrid, uh, like everything uh, used to be normal. Uh, I was enjoying the city. We were working from Google campus with more than 300 people just uh, living, let's say living and working in the, in the, in the same space. Uh, we were just uh, walking down the street, going shopping, enjoying Gran Vía, Main Streets and, and everything. And suddenly, um, everything started to change. Um, I think that something that we all experienced during, the, during these months is that um, suddenly was a boom. Like on TV, we were talking about some, uh, certain coronavirus. Uh, in, at, at work, they started to say that we need to pick up the laptops every day because maybe tomorrow we were not able to, to come to, the, to, to our offices. So everything started to, to feel quite strange. And I think that they started to set up some sanitation facilities at the office. And one day I, I was off. Uh, I was not in the office anymore. They told us to, to leave and I started to work uh, remotely. So it was just like an explosion of, of changes. Uh, after some days, uh, Madrid looks like that. Madrid was empty. This is the main street in Madrid called Gran Vía. And as you can see, there is only one person there and it's a uh, food delivery employee with the bike. I think it's a really great photo that represents the, the experience that we are living uh, right now. I also think that this, this is uh, a really a surprise and I'm sure that when we started 2020 this year, we were not expecting that. And I'm sure that when we always say to the new year, to welcome the new year, like 2020 surprised me. I'm sure that in 2021, we will say, please don't surprise me anymore. Because uh, we, what we are living, it's uh, it's uh, really uh, like like an experience we, we were not expecting. Some people call it a black swan event. The you can you can understand it an event that is something that we cannot prevent and predict. And when it happens, everything changes. And some people say that as a pandemic, it's not a black swan because we have already lived some some pandemics before. It's something that there was a risk there and we, we, we just were not prepared um, to face it. In any case, I think that the debate is, is quite interesting, but what is sure is that uh, we're currently experiencing uh, a global crisis due to, due to this coronavirus, due, due to this COVID-19 or whatever, this uh, tragic word um that affects both people lives health economy business every every aspect it forced it forced us to stay at home uh, to it, it floating us with overwhelming amount of information and uncertainty and some cases i think that we have too much information with us 
that looks like we, we have no information with us. Uh, it's not about having no information, but, have, but having too, too, too much information that change every day and whatever change today, change everything tomorrow. So it's, diffi- it's, really, it's really difficult to, to set up a strategy as a startup or entrepreneur that uh, plans to, to launch on a startup tomorrow. So I think that um, the world is in a process of adaptation to this new reality uh, that is generated by, by coronavirus, uh, which implies that people consumptions, uh, consumption and purchasing habits are, are going to change or have already changed. Um, and, and, this, and this not only means that it's going to change um, during these weeks, that polar probably are going to, to stay with us during the next month or, or, or even going to stay with us uh, forever. So I think that companies, startups also need to initiate uh, this transformation through innovation so they don't want to, to stay with a business model that probably is not going to, to work anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. After 70 days here in Spain, we have been in quarantine, uh, just isolation, stay at our homes. Everything looks like it's uh, starting to be uh, normal or restarting again. But um, this, this process is divided. I say it's only in Spain, so I don't know your case in, in your country, but here is divided into four stages. So stage one, stage two, stage, stage three, and stage, stage four, that looks like the, the normal thing. But um, we, 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 we are seeing that we are facing a, a new normal. So when we go out, we don't see like everything looks like, like before. Like the economy is a bit different, it's uh, about contact less. Um, is is characterized by an an intensive use of technology and little physical contact. And I I want to uh, make a point that this little uh, physical contact doesn't mean that we don't relate or or we don't don't socialize. But we we talk about uh, social distancing um, with ourselves, family, friends, work, and and everything. In this case, uh, this next slide. Um, this new economy or new normal, we see that is is affecting everything in our life, all or all the aspects of our life. So um, it's it's. I I I want to put here just some examples of changes that we had witnessing, but this is only the beginning. And as I say, I don't know if if these uh, changes are going to stay with us or as coronavirus is going to leave or just stay, but with some um, yeah, measures, it's, it's going to change again to, to the normal that we know. Uh, the, th- the thing we see here is that this pandemic has accelerated some changes and trends that we have seen then coming from years. It's not about, we are not talking about new technologies that we have never seen before. We are not talking about technologies that are totally new, but we are talking about technologies that were there, but the use that we, we had of them it was different, or maybe they were just um, increasingly uh, being adopted, but not in a weekend, okay? So as you can see, uh, the different here, uh, for example, in professional context, we, like most of the people is now working remotely, as for example, in our experience in the um, our accelerator, Teton Valley, we are all working remotely and all our startups are working from home. So this is something that's just changed from one day to another. I just had to take my laptop and start working from home. For us, it was not so difficult. Uh, we are used to use tools as G Suite, Google tools, and, and this, this kind of uh, remote tools. But it's a huge difference for for a lot of companies and people. So these are aspects and changes that are very, very difficult for some, some companies. In the case of, for example, personal context, we, we have seen the, the family relations have, have totally changed. So for example, we take care when we want to see our, our grandparents, uh, or we don't have this contact with the family, or just, for example, here in Spain, that we, we give two kisses as just saying hello. Social context is the same, like uh, what do we do in our free time? How do we exercise? If we exercise, for example, from home, that it's a trend right now, 
or how do we eat and take care of our health if we are from home? That's, that's something that is it's really changing. And of course, something more like general of geopolitics and industrial dynamics, the, the change in supply chains, everything is changing as, as we see. Uh, there's an example here I love, this is the concert uh, of Travis Scott in Fortnite with 12 million people just attending to the concert in the middle of, uh, of a video game or of, uh, of an e-game. This is something that is changing totally. So people just move to e-games to, to, to do something fun in, in, their, in their free time. And even they attend to a concert in an in a, in a e-game that doesn't, it's not a concert uh, at all. And of course, new privacy laws and everything that's going to change. As you know, all of us are staying uh, online. So it, it, it's important that we have this, this kind of laws. Um, the difference between this change and, and, and technologies is that the, the, these, these changes were not gradual. So for example, digitalization, online shopping, remote working have been introduced from Friday to, to Monday and rather than in a period of five to, to 10 years. So of life just changing in two days, uh, I, I like to say that it was a revolution of a weekend. And, and it was like that, it, it was actually like that. Um, not everything looks normal. Like most of the countries are already getting backed out uh, in the case of Spain is, is like that. And doing so, we, we find that this normality is not what we used to know as normal. Is, here you can see some examples of curious uh, things that we see now that uh, probably now it's not even so curious but because we are just uh, realizing that it's the new normal, L looks like feels normal. So for example, we want to go to a restaurant and we see here that they have some glass between us. We go to a cinema, opera or something. This is in Japan, I think. And we have some separate um, uh, empty seats between us or in this case that we go to a supermarket we see that they, they have some UV light in order to disinfect the, the supermarket this is a curious example about a wedding a wedding that is um, is is is, in, is celebrated in by Zoom that of course I think not all weddings are going to to be celebrated by Zoom in the following months uh, I hope so but it's something curious that looks like okay we just need to to adapt and just people that uh, when they enter to a place a lot of people so they measure the temperature and when they go to a school with the, wearing the mask um as for example here in spain we have never wear a mask it was something like we only see in japan that they, they wear a mask when they are sick and but it's it's not in our culture to to wear a mask and now it's it's normal it feels normal even when you go out you just need to wear a mask and, and that's all. And it's going to be mandatory anyway. <clears throat> um, I see that as entrepreneurs, I think that we found two, two very different profiles. The entrepreneurs who, who is already in the process of entrepreneurship, who has faced this Route C, let's say, why already is in, on a boat on the entrepreneurship path. And the entrepreneur who has not yet started, who can prepare himself to, to DC, knowing that this, there is going to be a lot of waves, let's say. So they can really prepare to these specific kinds of problems that are going to be there. I know it. So before just launching my startup, I need to understand that I, I need to maybe validate everything again. But if we are already there, uh, we're just facing problems that... But the, the, the thing here is that these problems can also become uh, some, some opportunities. Um, I see here some problems that we are now just facing. Um, also, they can be infinite and each case is a specific and different. We are talking just in, in general terms. So, for example, we can find some broken relationship with, with customers, maybe because the point of sale is inaccessible or just because physical interaction restrictions and possible solutions that we can see right now. So maybe go in store, live video, like showing everything by video streams, uh, live events or chatbots and delivery products. Um, and then if you don't like it, just take it back. So it's just about solutions that are now being implemented in countries that are, that are in, in other stages of the, of the disease. Um, 
Also, we see a drop in demand. Uh, for example, the product safety concerns are, are one of the, ca the, the case or, or the, the things that make this drop in demand. And possible solutions, for example, are small compartments, as you see the glasses in the restaurants or private showings in the case or art showing, for example, and some product redesigns. So maybe we, we just change the, the material in order to, to be uh, safer or just this disinfect with the UV apply that you can see in the supermarket. That is an example about Amazon, I think. So I think we are just living a moment where we need to analyze two things, uh, separate things, totally, totally separate. Um, there are some, some sectors that probably are solving some needs that is still there. So there are the underlying needs still there. So in the case of restaurants or tourism, we need to understand what are we giving to the user. So in the case of the restaurant or the tourism, maybe they just need to, to escape, to, to, to just feel they are not at home, to explore. This is actually the, the need that we are solving. And there are other sectors that the demand will probably not recover so soon, or maybe will, will even disappear. I found this um, exercise from Board of Innovation. I really recommend you to, to read this document. I found it very, very interesting as a very good exercise for, this, for the sectors that the underlying needs are still there. So for businesses whose demand has fallen, but I think that the intrinsic needs that the user uh, were looking to, to solve just remain intact, I think that we, it's very interesting to do this exercise like uh, from jobs to be done. So people who go on international holiday want, do it for to disconnect from home, to connect with family, friends, to meet new people, to have a new experience. To, I think it's very, very interesting to, to realize that this is, these are the problems that we are just uh, solving. So after we know that these are the problems that we are just uh, solving, we can also understand which are probably the steps that we can take, like within the travel tourism and outside the travel or tourism, like inside or outside our industry. As for example, here, we just can have an hotel experience in your house. You can stay local. You can just go for tourism, but in your country, or you can go outside your industry and, for example, just change to e-gaming. As I say, for example, the, the concert of Travis Scott or, the, or this example of, I think it's Animal Crossing. So I think it's a very, very interesting um, exercise that we can do. If you have already launched on a startup or you're deciding to, to launch a new one, just do this exercise of jobs to be done. And if you want to stay in one of the sectors that the needs are still there, okay? Okay. Now we will start with the new needs, new solutions. I think that like, every, like in everything else in life, uh, changes just as mm, they bring problems, they also bring new needs. And together with this, they can also become some um, opportunities. Uh, yes, there is, saying that, that there is a saying here, like a quote I really love, is give me a need and I give you a startup. Uh, <laughs> It, it's, it's actually something like that. I give me a need, I give you a startup, I validate this need, then I give you a solution, I give you a startup. But in this case, uh, I think that the problem here were not that the solutions were not right. The problem here were that the problems just changed totally from one day to another. The problem is not the same. So I really want to, to, to share with you the experience that we are just um, seeing right now. Let's talk a bit about our familiar perspective, the view we have from our position as a startup accelerator, with the teams uh, from early stages to advanced, sta uh, advanced stages. Um, I will talk to you a bit about Teton Valley. Teton Valley is a pre-accelerator, it's focused on the first steps of the, of the startups, but we have been working for 10 years, so the startups that we had in our community uh, are now in first stage and also in other stages. So it's very, it's very particular. Other particular thing is that we, we don't work in a particular vertical. So we don't work for uh, health, e-health or marketplace only, but we work with uh, startups that are focused on 
e-health, marketplace, retail, SaaS, fintech, mobility. And which is amazing here and looks a bit crazy is that you see the cooperation between startups that are focused on different sectors and how, how rich it is. Because uh, somehow they are all equally affected by, by this crisis, but they are also um, focused on other, other aspects or maybe they have different strengths. Yes, here. Um, what have we witnessed being an accelerator? Okay, we have, we have seen that the, the teams are uh, very agile. Uh, we always say like startups are agile, blah, blah, blah. But you can see it right now. It's like the perfect time to see that this is actually true. So we have seen people and teams that did suddenly they just, they have the ability to change and search for new channels, new offerings, new customer and segments, even new business models that are totally, um, totally different. So they have the like new business model and the possibility to adapt uh, to this situation, to develop new functionalities, to build uh, loyalty and to attract a new users that they have um, because thanks to the values that they they have they have rapid response and agile and they are focused on the user i want to share with you some some examples as for example um, some examples from our community in this case appcademos was a marketplace of online courses so uh, offline, offline courses, so for example, you want to learn some English and you don't know which certificate you need to, to have. So you go to Academos and they tell you, okay, you need this C2 Cambridge certificate uh, and this is the, the, the best um, offline course for you. Okay, there, was no, there were no possibility to go to an offline course right now. So they just changed the marketplace from offline course to online course in a few days. This is just amazing. They just change everything, like the value proposition in, in a weekend, let's say. Other example is, for example, uh, Nukula. Nukula was a healthy way of shopping from home. So for example, if you want to go to a supermarket and just uh, shop for your uh, grocery or anything, uh, you had the ability to, <clears throat> to order between healthy and not healthy. So when you maybe want to buy some ham, uh, you realize, you probably realize you don't see like we, which ham is the healthier one. So they, they, they reorder everything so you can buy healthier. The thing is with, with, the, with the pandemic, they were not able to deliver the products home and everything was crazy. So they just were not possible to, to keep their activity on. So what they, what they do was change the platform and they develop another platform in order to connect people that cannot go out um, to buy, but and connected with volunteers that um, were able to go out and buy from the supermarket, maybe food. As you can say, this is really great, for example, for elder people that were not able to go out and they were a bit scared about the, the pandemic. And you can connect it with young volunteers that um, probably they will just buy some food and there is no problem about uh, give it to them and it's, uh, it's really a, a, a huge help. In the case of, for example, Kubalizer, Kubalizer is it's really difficult to, to explain it in English. Um, it's, they, they used to manage physical spaces, so for example, offices. As you know, for example, on a landing page, you can also track anything and have analytics and everything. But in a physical space, uh, in an office, it was difficult to have analytics about the use of the space. So what they, what they use, to, what, they, what they do is to install some <clears throat> items and they, they track everything that happens in, the, in this physical space. So they adapt the product and now they, they still doing the same, but they do it for the new functionalities that are um, these um, safe and healthy physical spaces. So as for example, we know, that the social distancing needs are 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 covered. Okay. This is a, a point. La vida con niños. Uh, they used to sports and uh, child friendly places in the city. As for example, this restaurant. It's really great to go with children. And suddenly they realized the city was closed. So and it was even more close to to go out with children because you need to to take care of them and you don't really want to go out with, with them and go to a restaurant because you, you really want to take care of, the, of your child. So what they did was, was really to change everything and, and 
and changed from a child-friendly places to a marketplace of activities and a map of safe places and, and, and activities because they were a lot of um, activities online for children and maybe the parents had to work from home and they need to balance this familiar family life and, and, and work. So the, there was like a calendar with a lot of activities that were uh, carrying at the same time so you can um, give it to your, to your children. Um, in this case, it was an startup about daily tracker of re respiratory conditions. Uh, it's, it's very interesting in this moment, this kind of startups about e-health, and, and in this case, it's even more about respiratory conditions. So they just adapt the functionalities in order to, to be able to track your, 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 your respiratory condition. And of course, it's about coronavirus, which are the symptoms and everything, and, and that's all. Okay, what we see here, after just seeing these a few examples about our community, um, after witnessing this agility and the start that the startups have, um, how they are able to pivot everything and they, they, they just change the focus and they just look for new solutions. We believe that there is an opportunity here to, to collaborate. And it's not only about um, opportunity for the startups but we think it's a really win-win for the society for the for yeah for everything um, it's the perfect time for for collaboration between the startup ecosystem SMEA uh, public sector and corporations because each one has different strengths and we believe that the collaboration is a is a win-win for everyone as for example we can see the startups have the agility the innovation the risk management they, they have highly motivated teams some corporates and the public sectors had the knowledge, had the capital and the scalability. So this is something that the startups don't have. So there is a win-win and it can, it can be a synergy to work together. I think here, uh, it's not only for entrepreneurs who have already started the activity, but also for, for the new entrepreneurs who decide to start up uh, at this time and look for new solution. It's important to develop these solutions in, in, a, in, in a different way, just by validating each of these steps and be really proactive and do it in an iterative uh, vision. Um, this is something I, I think that really it's, it's about design thinking or the other methodologies about like lean startup that you probably may know, but I think that this is the, the moment of the design thinking. Uh, design thinking is, is a methodology about work of uh, a methodology of work that face and solve the challenges and problems that arise in organization using this creativity and multidisciplinary and, and teamwork. Um, I think that from this different and experimental and holistic approach, we really can emerge with uh, new solutions and, and really can. Um, achieve this innovation that we that we need. Yeah, as you see here, for example, design thinking really promote to face the difficulties and also these opportunities that can emerge uh, as, as designers, uh, you face the designs of the of the process or the products. The thing here is that we, we really need to understand the, the user, we really need to, to understand the user needs and we really need to focus on the person rather than, than on the product. Uh, let's say that the first question should always be like, what's the human uh, need behind it? So the, the ideas that arise from design methodology, such as design thinking, provide uh, value to the, to the customer, to the client, and represent also a market opportunity for the company, but also can be applied to maybe illuminate uh, better work processes or define maybe even new business model. That is something that we're probably looking for right now. We can represent this design thinking as a graph like that. So for example, at the beginning, we have a lot of Argentine and we need to research. We really need to understand the user. After that, we can really make a concept and really need to understand. And it's the last, the last step that we, we need to focus on design. But before this, we really don't know what we need to do to solve the, the problem. And this is something that really, I think um, we are living in this graph right now. Like we are over here right now with a lot of uncertainty. So, so we really don't know which are the solutions because sometimes we don't even know which are going to be the, the, the problems in the, in the next weeks. 
So just take it that it's not about what you do or how you do it, but about why you do it, how you do it, and what you do it. And because if you now have a solution, probably the why is going to change in two days. And it happens with, with, with everything, let's say airlines and, and, and all, okay? So really take this graph as uh, a way of your life because it's not only about designing products, but you, all need, you always need to have a, to have a why. Let's, let's do this in a five-step process. The first one is empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. The, the first two ones are about find the problem. The quite interesting thing here is that normally we stay here for a really short time, uh, for a really short time, and we go to the second part to, that it's find a solution, ideate, prototype, and test. Sometimes we don't even know, we don't even go to the prototype, we just build something and launch it to the market. And what happens is, is that, of course, the market doesn't, doesn't want this, this thing that we have just uh, built. What? Okay, let's go for the first step. Uh, I want to just do a, a quite fast uh, um, explanation about the design thinking steps. Because uh, I think it's very interesting. I want to show you a few tools, probably like four tools about empathize, and then we go to the, some recommendations and trends about coronavirus and, and, and the, ten, the tendencies. So um, the first step is empathize. The source of information is, is always people. This is the best information source always. And, and uh, we really need to understand what it's the experience in relation with the product. So the first stage, the first stage in the design thinking, it's it. We just really need, we really need to gain an empathetic understanding of the problem that we are just trying to, to solve. And, and typically we, we do it with uh, user research. Um, let's go, for example, for the first tool. The first tool I will recommend is about interviews, not about the stats and I, I will not go for numbers right now. I would really want to understand what they are suffering, what they are doing and how do they solve it and that's all. So I think that through interviews, we can really uh, learn how different customers feel about the problem we are trying to solve. And also um, if we can fix it or, or not, then how, how can we do it? We can do it in person, we can do it by phone, we can do it by video call. It's always in person, it's, in person is the best. It's, it allows us to, to see the customer reaction, the body language, to hear better the tone of voice and everything. But uh, okay, now it's, it's feasible, but one week ago it was not in, in Spain. So you can always use these video call tools as for example, Google Hangouts, Google Meet, Zoom as we are using right now, Cisco, WebEx, Skype. I think that we are just, all of us are becoming experts in video calls. So you can, you can always use this uh, to, to do an interview. Um, a recommendation, just listening a lot, talk um, as, as a little. And um, if it's possible, talk about, uh, try to get like a specific fact that they did in the past. Something is, is quite difficult to understand if the past is going to be important because everything is changing. But what is important is that you don't need to talk and you shouldn't talk about the idea or just use, uh, would you use, would you like, would you like to have, it, it, it's really bad to, to do these questions. Other tool that you can use is the buyer persona. I don't know if you ever use a buyer persona, but it's one of the tools that I really like the most. It's a semi fixtures representation of the final or potential customer that we're going to have. So we, we, we build it just with the information that we have from the behavior needs and motivation. And actually what we do here is just put ourselves in the shoes or the target and just try to understand they need actually and why do they need it. I like to understand it as a baseball car or football car that we used to have when we were just child. Um, as for example, you see like Cristiano Ronaldo used, used to have here like the, the face of the football player. And then we had the stats. Like it's really good in attack. It's really good in defense, blah, 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 blah. blah. It happens with all the cards. So it's something like that. Like we really need to understand the, the user to have a face in our, in our head and really need to, to understand the needs, the wants, desires, frustrations, and, 
and and some lifestyle okay so we really need to have some personals and professional interest uh, technical so for example what's the person age uh, or, um, would you like this product or not what kind of social media does she use uh, why is the user motivated so we really need to understand like this kind of frustration desires and, and everything it really helps us to get higher conversions and in this case, I think we really need to understand this in order not to only get higher conversions, but sometimes even to look for new customers because probably the other ones are going to change and people is going to have different different needs. Other tool that I recommend to, I, I always recommend it to do it with a pen, but in case you don't have a pen at home, let's say, or you want to do a collaboration in collaboration, you can use other tools as for example, Miro, or you can always, as in everything, have a Google slide PowerPoint with this template and just do it in collaboration with some posits or just writing over it. Is the, the empathy map. Uh, I think this tool is always uh, interesting, but in this case is even more because it's a graphic tool that really um, let us identify the, the target, the audience, and it's like um, looking at the world from their eyes. So um, we really will will understand like, uh, or we'll re answer like the following questions, like uh, what does the customer want? What force motivate him or her? And what can we do for this customer? Or who are they really, for example, how they feeling and thinking what do they see what do they hear what do they say what do they in in this case it's very important because a lot of people and i think most of us are overwhelming with a lot of news and information so it's really good to put it in a in this canvas and understand which is the information that the people is hearing and how do they think and feel with this information and what do they see and what do they say about this information uh, and everything and the last tool that I think is, in my case, I personally think this is a great tool in order to find some opportunities and pains. Uh, before, we need to understand that before a customer buys a product or just contract or service, he goes through a series of, of steps that sometimes we ignore. So um, this is the design thinking tool that really allows you to map of each stages and interactions and channels and elements that the customer goes through during the entire purchase uh, cycle. So from the moment that the need arise till the moment you become a customer, you experience a list of steps that we really need to, to understand, like what's happening there, okay? This is great to find some points of frictions, to also uncover duplication of efforts, and maybe we're doing things that are not, are not so good. And also to, to ambition some long-term change that we can just uh, focus. It's also important if we are if you're looking like new products or new products, or if you are just um, want to review maybe the expenses, which it's also important here. An example is when you go to the dentist, and this this is the customer journey map of going to the dentist before coronavirus. Because I think now it will be totally different. As you can see here, the negative part, the positive part, and the, the, the person just going to the dentist cycle, let's say. So the first part is just make an appointment. As you know, make an appointment is, is, is quite difficult sometimes. Like I want to go to the dentist, but I need to call. Then I don't like, I, I cannot this day. So I will just call again like two days ago, two days later. And it's it's... It's quite stressful. So make an appointment used to be difficult, but maybe now is even more difficult and even more um, stressful. Then the second part is go to the dentist. Like that day I need to be off or work um, and I need to go to the dentist. This is very bad. But when you arrive, the waiting room used to be cool. Like, okay, I'm here. Like neither good or positive or bad, but I'm already here just waiting. Now maybe the waiting room is also a negative part because I don't want to be waiting in a room with more people that I don't know, or I don't know if this room is uh, clean or not. Let's say that probably this, this point will be here right now. Then when we enter to the dentist, we used to see these machines, everything is white. There's a chair like that. Um, uh, you don't like to enter to the dentist. Like everything is 
quite cold. So probably now it's even worse because I don't know if he or she has cleaned the the tools and that, that's 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 very very different. So maybe uh, they need to install more, like more glass or disinfect. That is something that they used to do, but now we're just like looking at it with like it's it's really important. Then the anesthesia uh, and on the surgery and you pay. And pay is even more difficult right now because probably a lot of people are losing jobs and and maybe payments are are one of the negative points, which are I always say that pay used to be like uh, here low in the graph even lower now it's even even more difficult and then you just go so we need to understand this path and these stages and these steps and really look for the pains and if we see all these pains here maybe there are opportunities there to to make a better process to launch on a startup or or whatever okay then we go to the second step this define uh, I think define in the define stage you just accumulate a lot of information um, and during the the empathize stage you analyze your observation you syn synthesize them and defines which are the core problems that that you are going to to identify you, you have identified and then you re you say okay from these problems that I have identified what is the problem that I'm going to be focused on. So that's that's all. You just need to understand which is actually the, the problem that you're going to, to solve. In the third step, uh, you just need to, um, I think that we are already uh, in the position or generating new ideas as we, we, we arrive to the, to the third step. We already understand the problem. We already understand the user. So now it's time to, to, to really think outside the box and look for alternative ways uh, like of solving these this kind of problems and identify if, like innovative and new solutions that we just can, can explore. Um, probably most of you have already done a brainstorming. So this is, I think, one of the greatest tools in order to, to bring new solutions to, to life. Um, it's always great to generate a lot of, of ideas. It's always great to improve the creativity of, of working teams. And it's also good for look for new opportunities to, to solve problems and, and improve some process that, that we had in the company. I think that um, just in case, like no interruptions, not by idea, not bad easy, no not bad ideas, and also quantity versus quality. So it's uh, it's important that that the um, the users, like the the people doing in the brainstorming, are free to uh, think about impossible ideas because probably then we're going to mix it and some good idea is going to, to appear so that, that's all okay um i don't want to be deep into the brainstorming part just i give you some tools that you can use in order to do a brainstorming as for example mural or miro but these are probably um they have a cost so if you don't want to pay uh, you can use as i say for example google slides or other uh, presentation tool and do it in collaboration because this is the actually the, the most important part. I've seen some, for example, customer journey maps that I've been doing in a Google a spreadsheet. Okay. So whatever you feel it's the is the easier for you, that's that's it. We go for the fourth step, the fourth step and is the prototype. Let's understand the prototype as a, just a simulation or simple version of the final product, which actually is used to uh, for testing the, the 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 solution. And the goal here is actually just to to test the product. I mean, the the product, the idea that that's all. Um, before spending lots of time and money into creating something that probably is going, not going to be perfect anyway. So now we had a problem. Then we had an idea and now we had nothing. So instead of having nothing, we should have a prototype. Um, we should have a prototype because we really need to give something to the, to the user in order to know if something needs to be, to be changed, okay? Um, let's see, some examples. For example, in case that your product is digital, we have many tools that facilitate the development of some prototypes. Like for example, are the landing page builders or just simulations. 
uh, application builders. I've seen application builders that are very easy to use. Uh, or for example, these uh, sketches or, or just, um, I've seen even um, app builders with a spreadsheet. So um, that's all. We just need to have something that really solves the problem that we are facing. And then maybe we just uh, um, get better in the, in the solution, okay? If your product, for example, is not digital, but you have a product that is also physical, we have, uh, um, here are some examples. Uh, for example, this mask or these uh, breathing machines. We can use uh, materials and some processes that are not uh, so expensive and now are much less expensive than, than others. As for example, the 3D printing, it's a, it's a great option. It's not so, so expensive as, give, as, as producing a piece in, in, a, in, in another way, okay? And the fifth, the fifth step, which is test, is just about give it to your user. I think that the goal here is just to validate or not if the ideas and the prototype and are, are useful. And of course, also detect some mistakes that maybe we, we had in the, in the concept or in the, in the design. I think this example is great. Uh, it's an example that we have seen during, this, during these weeks. Um, I don't know if it happens in your countries, but here in Spain, we had a, a huge problem with the availability of the breathing machines. We didn't have so many breathing machines for the people that were in the hospital uh, suffering this, um, this disease, the coronavirus. So uh, there were a group of makers that were independently distributed during the, uh, all around the country, designers, uh, engineers, everything, just uh, working remotely that we're looking for different solutions in order to give the hospitals new breathing machines and tools that they need in order to control these, these um, and take care of these, um, these patients. So uh, using this mask, uh, these goggles, the, the goggles of the um, underwater, and probably you know some of the brands as I think it's Cresi and Decathlon. They used to, the, they did this um, piece with the 3D printing, machine in order to, to make a prototype that was a working prototype for the, resp uh, the breathing machines. Of course, you have the prototype, but you need to test it. So they had to go to the hospital and test it with a person. And let's see if this, this mask with the 3D printing piece is actually uh, solving the problem. Of course, this, uh, this example is, 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 is very particular and, and need to be tested because there is a life uh, that depends on it. It's not just as launching an app and decided if the button is need to be here or this functionality works or not. In this case, uh, it's, it's very important that the functionality works because there is a life that depends on it. Okay. And next and last point, I'd like to point about opportunities, about uh, trends and tips and recommendations that we are um, now uh, facing, I don't know, time, yeah. Okay, uh, and opportunities and trends and tips and recommendations that we are facing now when reactivating uh, this uh, economy. And let's say these examples. So I think that the reality that we are facing, of course, is more digital and every day. And after this event is going to be even more so. so there is not going to be like uh, increasing, but it's going to be blah, and probably they will stay there because there are some technological trends that we see that we have rise today and probably I'm not going to disappear. I am sure that uh, probably in a few months, I would like to do this uh, presentation in person rather than by Zoom. But when you, for example, in another example, um, in another case, you pay for the first time with your uh, card online, probably you have the card there and you're going to buy more and more online. So there are some changes that are probably not going to, to, to be back as, as, we used to, as we used to have. So I think that we see here some trends and technological trends that we are uh, seeing on the rise today. And if you're going to launch a startup or if you, of, or if you are uh, already launching a startup, uh, those startups that belong to or make use of these uh, technologies, 
are probably will um, will attract more att uh, attention in the upcoming in the upcoming months, and possibly will also um, attract in attract the the eyes of the investor more easily. Uh, I think that a great examples of winners, for example, the online shopping, delivery robots, remote work, e-learning. E-learning used to be there; it was there. All the solutions were there, but now there is a the wall is just landing from home. So uh, I think this kind of e-learning uh, platforms, e-health platforms, or, or for example, the, the online shopping and the contactless payments are going to, to stay there, okay? And some example of winners, um, let's say, for example, Zoom. I think that Zoom is actually the winner of the, uh, the, the technological trends. They used to have like, uh, 10, 20, I don't know actually how many million users and now they have hundreds of million users uh, registering and using it to do webinars, to do class and actually everything, even to celebrate a wedding. And let's, let's understand it as for example, Zoom is now um, like it's the, the value of, of, of Zoom in the market is now bigger than the seven largest airlines combined. So Zoom is, uh, is just exploiting, okay? So if you are doing something like, like Zoom, I think it's also important to, I think there was, a, there was a question before about going into a saturated market. I think, for example, in the, in the, in the aspect of, of Zoom, Google Hangouts, Google Meet and Cisco, Skype and all these solutions, it's important also to go for a vertical in, inside, this, uh, inside this sector and solve some problems that probably Zoom is not solving, okay? Okay, and in, in this, um, um, one of the last points, uh, I really like it or not, I really, I really need to, to show you that uh, uncertainty is just part of our lives right now, and it's going to, to stay here for, uh, for a bit. And we really need to, to know how to adapt to, to this reality that we, we face. So we need to identify these problems that we come and turn it into some opportunities. And how can we do it? I think that in, in this case, for example, really it's, it's time to get to know our new user better. So it's time to come to know the user, what's happening. If we knew him before, uh, probably we need to recognize him again. Uh, probably we need to <clears throat> to know how to identify what he is looking for, what she is looking for, what uh, does uh, she or he need right now, uh, the solutions, the value that we can offer. Also, we need to really, and it's again creativity. I think it's a word that becomes a cliche, but actually it's 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 important. I think that um, um, we we everything is unknown right now. And this is the perfect solution to find solutions and different solutions to new problems, okay? So really uh, try to maximize their creativity and try to not only find solutions, but anticipate to, to problems and detect it before we, we all see it, because this is the opportunity. Um, also being more agile and flexible, that's the key point right now. Uh, if you're not flexible, if you're not agile right now, probably your startup, probably your company is, is going to, to die because it's really important. Everything is changing in just 24 hours and everyone is just living a new situation. Um, be more supportive and proactive. I think it's time really for teamwork. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to, to go far, go together. And this is the moment of uh, really collaboration and, and teamwork. So be more proactive. It's not about um, egos and, and blah, blah, blah. But it's really, um, I think it's, that's why design thinking is so interesting and, and a collaborative uh, tool right now. Also, socializing more than ever. It looks quite difficult right now because how can I socialize if I'm at home? Yes, isolated, that I cannot travel, I cannot go to conferences uh, and that's all. Uh, you can, you can actually, uh, we are living this social distancing, but we, we are not living like the stop or socializing. As you can see right now, we are now a lot of people just in a conference, just using Zoom. And I will be happy to connect with you. I will be happy to reply to your questions, to share some opinions. So I think that yeah, we also have an open door 
to go to events that were not possible to attend before that used to be only in place and now we just can attend to uh, an event that is now being celebrated in Silicon Valley, an event in Spain, an event in Germany. So just try to go and talk to people and, and do this networking online. And, and the last part, I think it's collaboration in an in a open way. I think that um, we, we, we all need to collaborate to get out of this situation and we will do it together. And it's really important to set, a tie, set aside the, the egos and collaborate between startups and both small businesses, a corporation, public sectors, because really, as I said before, there are some different strengths that we can, we can synergy between, between each other and it will be a win-win for sure. And as the last point, uh, I really, really want to make a point here. Um, the situation has given us an image and feelings that we haven't experienced really in a long time. So for example, the skies of the cities are uh, now a bit blue, like there is no a smog or, or this contamination that we used to live with. The animals in the areas that probably before they were not. And we are missing uh, the, the, the little things actually what we used to call the, the little things. So I think that this situation is the opportunity for this generation actually to, to redesign, rethink and relaunch uh, a world that was actually asking for help during, for, for during the last, last years. We have seen like we have been at, uh, at home for many days. We are missing the loved ones. We, we miss the sun. We miss walking in the street. We miss feeling the sea. I think that we are also consuming in a different way and we are just realizing like what is the most important uh, when, what is not the, the most important but the, the noise of the city we're just uh, screaming. Okay, so let's think about how we want to do it from now and I really hope that we, we think about it and, and we, we, we will recover from this, we will go together but we really need to understand and don't forget that this is the only place that we have to live. So if you're launching a startup, really do it in a social social way because the, 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 the social impact looks like it's, it's more important than ever, okay? That's all by my side. Uh, this is my contact, uh, this is my email, this is my LinkedIn. As I said before, I'm open to questions. Uh, if you want to connect, uh, feel free. I would love to connect with you. If you want to share some opinions, um, or just don't agree with me in some opinion or some trend, it's, it's always great to hear you. And, and that's all, I hope you're safe over there and that you enjoy uh, the presentation during your lunch. Thank you. Hello. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sergio. And um, that, that was very good insight, so. Uh, very interesting to listen to you. So again, for those who are joined the, the webinar, uh, the, this online session, the students, the startupers and other audience, feel free to ask a question either live, just loud, or uh, write in the Zoom chat box. What is something that you want to discuss more? Do you have some question or some comments? Feel free to write or to ask straight away. Okay, okay, again, while others are thinking about their questions or formulating them, mm -hmm. uh, how do you think regarding this, um, you, you named it very well, this uh, revolution that happened in one weekend. Uh, how do you think, Sergio, how we can uh, anticipate if the problems that we are currently like uh, looking that the people have, if they will stay after the year or half of the year, they will be actual and needed um, that we are working on because it seems that this crisis is a bit different from the previous and it's very unclear how it will be afterwards so these are sometimes the arguments uh, that our people are saying how do i know what i can do right now because i don't know what will happen how the world will be after after a while do we jump back to the previous version that where we were or it's totally different what would be your answer uh, I think that it's, it's, it's um, let's say that there's like a quote in Spanish that is uh, dress me slow because I, I'm in a hurry uh, and it's something like that is I think that it's time to observe the, the, the way that the user 
is um, the, uh, acting and as for example let's say for example with holidays right and like the travel sector uh, is it going to change in the next year um, depends on the user depends if the people want to travel or not doesn't depend if the flights are there or not I mean maybe there is flight there are flights but there are no families uh, going to the beach or maybe there are not flights and there are, there are families just taking the car to go to the beach. So it uh, really depends on the, on the user. So I will really, really like focusing on, the, on these behaviors. And as soon as we start to feel normal, as soon as I think that we will recover and as soon as I'll, things I'll, are getting more, more clear. Because uh, for example, in the case of, of Spain, uh, I think we were not uh, just an ex little example. We were not uh, we were not used to wear mask. Uh, like uh, this for us is it was crazy. You see someone with a mask and it's like uh, she she or he is not Japanese. What happened? It must be like really really dangerous. And in this case now it's it's probably will stay with us. Um, I don't know. It's it's. It's something like, like, like that. Probably, I think, um, depends on the culture. Uh, I think in the case on, of Spain, as soon as we start getting to normal, we really, we really like to socialize, and I'm sure that we would like to go to uh, offline events and, and everything as soon as possible. And I'm sure that um, there are some things that will remain, but probably some things that will remain like uh, hybrid. So, for example, about the events, probably we will have the online events uh, again and again and again, but are going to be events that are offline and then in, in a streaming. So I don't think that these doors are going to close and that's all, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sure that things are um, getting normal in the next months or years or who knows, but there are some, some, some things that aren't going to change at all. And in the, in the case of, for example, the digital trends, as I mentioned, like the e-commerce and uh, health food and uh, e-learning, remote work, that's, I would say this is not something like uh, we will work remote for two months and then everyone is going to go to the offices. But these were trends that they were there. And now it happens in two days. And there is a huge percentage of these uh, peoples and new e-commerce and new behaviors that will, will remain there after the crisis. As for example, with the online payments, uh, one of the barriers is to put your card in the, in the web. But as soon, you, as soon as you put your card in the web, you register the, the card, and as soon as you buy your first item and it was successful, then you it's really difficult to keep your card and say, I'm not going to buy again, buy online. So uh, there are some barriers that once you destroy them, mm, that's all. So here's a question in the chat, uh, probably Sergio, you can read. And uh, the question is following, what do you think about the idea that after the crisis ends, majority of the people who can work remotely will continue to do so? And the structure or the way of working will be changed permanently, meaning that many offices will be closed and many businesses will switch to the remote work. What's your opinion? Just give me a second because I will try to read the... Uh, yes, so I'm still sharing the screen. Uh, what do you think about the... Uh, I think that depends. Uh, um, there are some... I think that remote work, it's really a great opportunity for, for, for many aspects. So in, in the case of Exam, in the case of Spain, um, in my personal, let's say about, let's talk about my personal case. I'm from Malaga, South Spain, and then I, I had to move to Madrid in order to work in the accelerator. Um, and it's really uh, typical here in Spain that people from the different states need to move to Madrid, Barcelona, or, or big cities in order to work in the, in the sector. And sometimes it's not really necessary that you need to go to Madrid to live. And it really, opens to a new um, 
let's say, to a new universe of talent and people that have really huge talents and they live in other states that they can work remotely. So it's really an, an opportunity for the, for the companies. But depends. Depends on the, on the kind of uh, job, depends on what they ask you for. And, and, but of course, I think that there are a lot of companies that they, they will remain um, doing this remote work. Because if you see that probably the first two weeks are, are more difficult, but then you just adapt and you have the tools and you understand the people is responding well. And, and then you don't need to be in a place and um, spending two hours in, on the train to go to the office, like happens in cities like big cities. And, and the, the quality of life is even better. People is happier, so they work better. And I think it really depends, but um, there is, this is one of the good aspects that we can, we can take. It's also good for the, um, the massification. I don't know if it's this, this is the word of the, the cities so to fight against it and, and to bring possibilities to other uh, states and other parts of the country that are probably not so developed in, in the sector. But will they stay or not? Uh, some, some yes, some no, uh, that, that's it. Mm -hmm. I, I was uh, reading the case about Sea Trip. Uh, so that's the biggest travel organization in China. So the whole huge one. And already se several years ago, they tested this model for the remote work. So they assigned uh, part of the um, employees to wor work from home and part stayed at work. And we are comparing the results. And uh, what they found out that the results um, working remotely were actually quite better. They were very, very efficient. But um, so this, uh, the, this test was, this experiment was for something like more than half of the year. And uh, after that, when the workers were asked uh, uh, if they want to continue to work like this, they said, okay, at the beginning it was fun, you know, interesting and new and they were ready. But uh, if they were asked to continue like that, big part of them, they said, no, <laughs> they want to go back yeah. for, for work because they miss the socialization. So that means um, some kind of yeah. hybrid model will be probably that would work be better, probably. I, I totally agree with this. It happened uh, to me. I reply just personally, in my, in my opinion, and my experience right now. I also need to say that, uh, I have to say like this, what we are experiencing right now is, is not like remote work at all. Because uh, remote work can be really different. Like th there is a life, I mean, after remote work. In this case, we are just working and then we just change from the screen of the video call to Netflix. And, and this is not uh, like, I mean, re remote work is, is like a lifestyle. I mean, you, you can be working from home and then you have other things to do and you can go have a walk. In Spain, is what it was not possible for two months. So it can be very frustrating. And as you say, like the first one month, two weeks or two months looks fun. But after that, you feel like you are all day just in front of a screen, talking with no one and changing uh, some screens in, in, in Chrome. So uh, in my personal uh, experience, my personal opinion, if they told me, do you want to uh, still working in remote work? I will say, Yes, but I like to be a um, hybrid, as you said. As for example, yes, uh, these days I work from home and I'd like to come to Malaga, which is my city in the south of Spain. Um, I love living here, but some days I like to go to Madrid and sometimes uh, probably I will do it because I, I like to be in the office. I like to, re to be surrounded by my colleagues. I, I really like to be there. I have fun with them. I have lunch with them. And I think this is something very important in order to... To, to achieve this uh, collaboration and teamwork. In any case, there are other tools in order to probably, uh, what happens in the office doesn't happen here. As for example, you go walking and you say hi to someone, you start talking to the other person. And this is something that here, of course, doesn't happen. So you need to plan it. Uh, and so it's, it's not about, oh, I, I feel so sad, there is nothing happening, but to say, Okay, so on Thursday, we will meet, we will do a Zoom, let's say, and we will do an escape room online, 
or we will just drink uh, something, but together talking about something that is not related with work, as I don't know, my, my pets and host everything, my hobbies, or just doing some, something together. Because I think this is very, very important, really to have a connection with the, with the, with the teammates that, that are not only uh, like the tasks, like, because this is uh, after two months, this is destroyer. Okay, thank you, Sergio, for your uh, opinion and answer. And thank you, Eva, for question. And now I, I see Eva is asking uh, or giving comment more. From my experience, majority of my colleagues, me including, are asking the management to allow the hybrid regime as well. Today's a week working from home, the rest of the week from office from some uh, accountability. Yeah. Yeah, so we as see I said, this is people uh, like uh, that. I love to have something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank I you, Eva, for that, like that you raised this uh, this issue, which uh, actually the the uh, relates to all the business issues that we are talking right now, uh, including to the probably some problem solving possibility, <laughs> how yeah. to to create new business ideas based on these hybrid models. Yeah, because uh, as I said, this is something that once once you try it, you realize that there are some good parts and some bad parts, but you realize that, hey, I would like to work remotely. I like to be from home, uh, but at the same time, I miss this from my work and probably was something that at the beginning, you really don't feel like it was so important. Like for example, when you're working there, you really want to stay home. But when you stay home, you realize, wow, I really miss this, uh, let's say, um, silly or useless conversations uh, in the, in, in the in in the office and you really miss them mm -hmm, mm -hmm. thank you uh, i do see that we have the um, the listeners not only from latvia but at least by names i do see from spain from Finland, and other countries uh, do you have some questions or the comments that you would like to to say regarding them this um, business idea development and the problem solving possibilities uh, during the crisis time or some other issues that you could raise or comment. Yeah, also if, if they want to, uh, as I said, uh, my email is there and if they want to contact me by LinkedIn or they have like a, more a specific questions about uh, the project or something that they are planning to launch, um, feel free to reach me because it's always great to uh, to talk about uh, this this kind of issues and and people from different countries and and different like situations because we have been living this but different 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 things and yeah okay again the call as a last chance for those <laughs> who have something in their mind uh, that they want to ask. There, even if that relates to your private issues, meaning uh, you have some ideas, you want to test them and you are not sure about something, feel free to ask the expert. I th also, if, yeah, I think here there are like two different profiles. The person that were already an entrepreneur and were like launching a startup that was validated with some hypotheses that have totally changed and this person uh, if they if they get funding, if they already had a team, if they had some clients, if, if they had some customers, um, it's a difficult time. But um, they really need to understand that th this is a startup. I mean, everything can happen. In this case, it was a coronavirus, but could have been any other thing, as for example, any competitor or just uh, some law changing or whatever. And what they really need to show is this, this ability to, to be agile. And I'm sure there are opportunities coming in, in many sectors. Um, we are all feeling different problems, but problems that we have never experienced, as for example, go to a restaurant and not be able to, to read the menu as one of the biggest examples here. And, and many other things as planning holidays, or um, having fun while at home, uh, doing a sport at, at home. 
there are many things that probably will remain here and many opportunities that will come. And if you are on the other profile, the person that were going to launch on a startup and suddenly this happens, uh, try not to be in love with your, with your idea and try to go again and again and again validating because this is actually a great moment to validate new needs because as, as, you, as, as we can see, there are needs in, in huge sectors and probably little needs that are verticals that are not being solved even for even by big companies or big names so go there try to solve this vertical this little need this is what you can do as a startup and probably you don't know it yet but you are solving a a, a huge problem for a lot of people that are are experiencing right now and they don't even knew it thank and you I think this is one, one. yep one one of the examples was uh, with um, was with this the video call tools. I, I really like the, the 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 tools of video calls, and I think I've tried all of them, like Zoom and Google Hangouts, Google Meet, Google Duo, uh, Cisco Webex, or by like Jitsi. I think I've tried all of them, and I really like uh, to understand like all of them are trying to do something that is quite similar, and but the 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 needs. Uh, are totally different sometimes so we don't need the same tool in order to do this uh, talk rather than to drink a beer so um, i think they're really need totally different needs and different users and you can focus like your 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 work in one of the the verticals as for example for let's say for e-gaming let's say for conference let's say for um, like a round table with four people talking at the same time with a presentation in the in the middle um, only one person how do you have the notes if you share a screen where are the notes can I access to the chat you cannot is the chat accessible I mean there are so many things just in something that used to look like ah, everything is the same yeah but when 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 you do it and you use it every day you realize it was not the same. You really need something that solve your needs. And I'm sure that this is something that you experience uh, all the organiz uh, or the organization while deciding which tool do we use? How do we use it? Do you think this is the, the, the right tool? Uh, do the participants have the access to the chat? Uh, they can activate or not the microphone? I don't know. There is an universe in, in one tool that looks like video calls. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you for the very good um, like words for the uh, current startups and the future startups and students with their ideas and the example that you were giving. I think that would, would be very good. And uh, just connecting this webinar to the, the previous one that we had in the morning with, uh, with Raul was uh, talking about this um, the skills and abilities that, as you said, we need to be agile. And yes, that's this ability to cope with uncertainty and and uh, failures and, and other things. That's something that we need to train uh, just by doing, most probably, learning by doing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And spend, as, spend the less money you can because probably it's going to change. So if you can do it with... Uh, paper do it with paper because <laughs> who knows just try to validate and then you you spend money because there are a lot of apps and everything and that were launched before this and now they they see a probably they, they're going to be able to do it in a few months but now there are like let's say three two three four five six months of empty space so you cannot just stay there like okay in six months i'll try again Mm, yeah, but uh, if you can just pivot and try to look something else, it's probably more interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, then uh, thank you very much, Sergio. That was um, that was useful. I I, I made I made notes for myself. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the, the the your from your perspective, that's always um, uh, very good to hear you. 
And then uh, in case someone wants still to ask a question or give the comment, here's the chat. Uh, I will open that uh, still for a few minutes. Uh, and then in case needed, we can answer afterwards. But otherwise, thank you very much for everyone that you participated and uh, those who are interested and those who have a, a possibility to join tomorrow, we will be happy to invite you tomorrow for the next sessions. If you have some questions, feel free to ask to, to me, for example, and uh, or write here in chat, uh, or write me email, christine.berzin at ludl.lv. So communicate to us or uh, using different possibilities. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to share this afternoon with you. And uh, I hope that in, in the following, let's say weeks or months or whatever, we can just again meet in person. And, and if it's in Latvia, I, I will love it. Oh, I do hope we will have icebreaker, but who knows in which format again. <laughs> let's, yes. say, let's say, let's mm -hmm. see, let's see. Thank you. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, Sergio.